Hi everyone and welcome to Football Therapist where after having analyzed four Ecuadorian players in, in one video, the Swiss team in another, as well as having talked about the, the new Uruguayan national team in another one, we continue today my series on the 2022 World Cup with an, an, an analysis of, of Denmark, uh, obviously with video sequences from, from matches. As this is a team that, that is now very well known since their great run at the Euros last year, I decided to focus on on some micro tactical specs for, for this video. As a, I imagine that many of you already know how Denmark looks like on a pitch. Um, indeed, they, they are an attractive and versatile team as well as as well capable of, of pressing and counter pressing than than at attacking quink, quickly uh, uh, afterwards. As, as of building from, from the back with long balls uh, if necessary, even if it's mainly their ability to, to play in small spaces, especially with, this, with the technical quality of Damsgaard, Eripsen and Meile that, that characterized the, this team last summer. So it is with thought that I want to, to start talking with, with this first sequence, in, which is quite typical of, of Denmark. We see four players who who will dare to, to come closer in, in a small space uh, to, to play together. Pausen, but also Heiberg for following a, his pass, move towards or moving towards the, the center of the square, which, I, as you will see, will shrink. It's going to shrink while, while Braceweight's positioning isn't uh, insignificant. Not being known for being a, a dribbler, um, a skillful player, a profile that, that Denmark perhaps uh, lacks up front, the Barca player almost never really finds himself on, on the flank to, to look for a 1v1 situation. He makes up for, for this by teaming up more with his teammates, like here, where the action will remind you of Marcelo Bielsa's fa famous out-in-out -out passing pattern. For those who, who don't know, um, it's about going out first, then in, before going, uh, going out again, uh, out, in, out. When done more quickly, this zigzag must indeed be quite unpleasant for the opponent players in, in the middle of, of it, as, as they have to constantly re reorient themselves, themselves, which is just slightly the case here. Just watch. Once the square is no road like here, it it is usually uh, necessary to break it up with a, de uh, a deep run, since if every uh, everyone asks for the ball at their feet, the square uh, tends to become even smaller, making it easier for the opponent to, to recover the ball. Here, it's Paul, it's, it is Paulsen, Paulsen who, who makes this, this deep run, with, which will attract uh, an opponent and, and just leave space for Oybjerg in front of him. I'll let you enjoy it. As we've seen before, uh, Denmark tend to tend to leave space in front, uh, um, up front, uh, in front of the wings when up front of the wings when on the ball because of the profile of their players. Except when uh, Skov Olsen is on the pitch, uh, where he is very often found on the right side. Even if the young striker is becoming always more important in the national team, Denmark needs to be able to exploit these spaces when, when they are left free, which is usually the case on, on his side when, when he is absent, for instance. And it's something they do they do really well. I've chosen two sequences to illustrate this. First, we have Heuberg uh, getting into this space where he's going to receive a, a pass from Bryceweight. When it's not the midfielder who makes a run, to, a run into this space, the striker on that side may do so, either with the intention of receiving the ball there, uh, or to create space in, in the center or in the half space for, for a teammate, which is going to, to happen here with Paulsen and Eriksen. Paulsen is going to go wide and Eriksen into the off space. Although I doubt that Paulsen's 
that Paulsen's intention really was to create space for, for Eryx in the, in the previous sequence, the Danes seem to know very well when it is necessary to, to lose not their marker, but uh, the marker of one uh, or more, te uh, more teammates. Example here with Daniel Vass, who already started this run. So I did this as, that his intention was first to create space for his, for his team. He's going to, to run through through the gap between Braithwaite and, and Ericsson, something that Maile also does very well on his side. Thus, thus will force uh, the two highlighted fins to not not to get too close to, to their respective opponent player in, in this situation. Ericsson will have time to, to turn and pass the Braithwaite, will have enough space to, to receive the ball on, on the inside. Let you watch, it is coming. Was run who attract tracking both fins. Even now the, the impact of da Daniel Vass' run can still be appreciated as he drew with him the player who, who was heading towards Ericsson, leaving the ladder free to, to receive the ball again. And even if he then opted for to shoot in, in this situation, Denmark is a team that crosses a lot from, from the edge of the box and, and the wings with, without necessarily going to, to the back line to, to do so. The reason that the reason is that in, in the absence of, of wingers, we have a lot of strikers in, in the center who can get into the box very quickly with, with two or three strikers sometimes being joined, joined in by, by midfielders, like Delaney here, who's precisely, pre, who's precisely very good in the box, but also um, by the opposite fullback, um, as you will see here. The advantage of crossing from such posi positions is mainly in the counter-pressing, which could have then been done here directly by, by Ericsson, who, who's going to, to do well not to leave his position to avoid a possible loss of the ball becoming dangerous with what's been now being up front. Up front. Even if the, the Danish forwards um, are a good argument for choosing the cross, we have... Um, Jonas Wein and, and Yusuf Pausen here, but so would Braceweight, Skowalsen, Dahlberg and Cornelius be. Ericsson's shooting quality makes him just as dangerous. Look at that. Although dangerous on the ball, Denmark haven't yet resolved the, the weakness already present at, at the Euros when, when off the ball. The protection of the center. England were already able to, to take advantage of, of the free spaces between the, the Danish defenders and, and midfielders. The latter still have to learn how to prevent passes behind, the, behind their back, especially these towards the centre. Even though Jonas Wind, uh, Jonas Wind he, is coming here from, from behind, from behind uh, too late on, on Frankie the Young, Heiberg is far from perfect as well. With Maile pressing on the left, uh, Delaney has to keep an eye on Dumfries, meaning Heuberg has to get closer to, to Bergwijn to protect the center, especially when in front of him, when in front of him uh, there's Frankie de Jong, who is able to, to run through such uh, a space as you're going to see now. Oh, magnificent. Oh, he's carrying the ball. Even if Hoybjerg's decision and, and pressing are, are questionable here, it's mainly Yusuf Paulsen's positioning that bothers me uh, because he's not protecting anything, not even a, a possible pass to, to the left, while Delaney is all alone in the middle. Bergwang will therefore be able to, to receive the ball, which even led to a goal that Denmark could have avoided if, if Paulsen had positioned himself where I indicated. It's coming, back fine, it's on the ball. The last sequence is again about the midfielders, as Hoibjörg and Delaney are really not at the best here. Um, the sides are well protected by the Danish fullbacks and wingers, while there are no Dutchmen in the half spaces. So the two midfielders have only one job here, to prevent any pass to the center where there are three Dutchmen in, in the same area. Being captivated by the ball, a pass will go through uh, the cup the, they are leaving. Rather than 
changing the system, I, I try to I would try to, to correct this problem if I were the, the excellent Casper Ullmann as uh, the generally favored 3412 or 343 otherwise seems to me to, to be ideal for, for making the most uh, of, the, of the collective when, when the best players are available. So now the sequence. Bergwein and Speichel. So we conclude these video se sequences, but not the video, the whole video, with this very nice save by, by, by Schmeichel, uh, one of the pillars of, of this squad uh, that, that I, hadn't, I, I hadn't mentioned until now, like Kjar and, uh, and, and Christensen, who, who, whose usefulness in carrying the ball forward to, to progress also deserves mention. But if some players played a key role during the Euros, New ones could become so at the World Cup. Indeed, some, uh, some youngsters could gain in importance by, by November. I've already mentioned uh, Jonas Weind and, and Scott Wilson, but youngsters uh, with, with even fewer caps or, or none at all are also candidates. The, vers the versatility of Jesper Lindström of Eintracht, Eintracht Frankfurt all allows, uh, allows him to play up front both uh, as an attacking midfielder and on the wings, where... Ajax player Mohamed Darami is, is very promising as well. As for the right back position, there are also two young candidates in, in Alexander Ba from, uh, from Benfica and Rasmus Christensen, who, who's just signed for, for leads from, from Red Bull Salzburg, where Kiergord, uh, another, another young Dane, plays. Although he's one, he's the, he's the only one the only player on this list who, who hasn't yet played for, for the national team, he could perhaps complete the midfield if he continues to, to develop uh, with Salzburg, a club whose academy was precisely the subject of, of a video on my channel, if you'd like to, to discover the secrets of the work done there. As for Denmark, uh, it is a country to which I, I tend to, to dedicate uh, at least two other videos through through the clubs uh, of Midgieland, with its big data, and Nordseeland, known for its linguist uh, Ganai and uh, Academy Right to Dream. Make sure you you, you, you subscribe to Not Meet Miss Out on, on this, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to, to drop a like, to let me know about it in the comment section, and to share the video with someone you know. It will help me a lot, way more than you think. Bye-bye!